today i am back with the second part of animal kingdom and in this part we are going to finish the chapter of animal kingdom okay so today we will start with phylum tenophora let me take the pen yeah so today we are going to start with phylum tenophora what we see here these are exclusively marine okay these are exclusively marine see if this color is prominent yeah it is so let us use this color since we already have blue and red in the presentation they are exclusively marine they are radially symmetrical we can see here this structure see this is this this way this way this way they are radially symmetrical okay they are diploblastic and they have tissue level of organization c now we have come from cellular level of organization to tissue level organization they have eight external rows of ciliated comb plates this one they have ciliated comb plates 1234567881234567881 and they are used for locomotion here digestion can be extracellular digestion can be intracellular bioluminescence is one of the very important property of these tenophora that is what is bioluminescence body which emits light body which emits light here sexes are not separate so we can call them hermaphrodite reproduction only sexual fertilization external and indirect development so let us see two of the examples pleurobrachia and tenoplena this is pleurobrachia this organism is pleurobrachia okay so let us come to our next phylum phylum platyhelminthes see this is a very important phylum why i told you while teaching diploblastic and triploblastic also that triploblastic organism starts from platyhelminthes triploblastic organism starts from phylum platyhelminthes they are dorsoventrally flattened dorsoventrally flattened means they have a dorsoventral differentiation that is the upper part is little bit different than the lower surface so this is the dorsoventral separation and they are flattened like this like dorsoventral flattened body they are mostly endoparasites they have hooks and suckers like this parasites have hooks and suckers they absorb nutrients through body surface they absorb nutrients through body surface they have flame cells which are used for osmoregulation as well as secretion they have flame cells which are used for osmoregulation as well as uh, secretion here also sexes are not separate fertilization internal in the last one what did we study it can be intracellular or extracellular but here it is completely internal development through larval stages development through larval stages one of the platyhelminthes that is planaria has high regeneration capacity that is its uh, rate of reproduction is very high so it has a high regeneration capacity now these are the two examples stenia tapeworm we know tenia solium and fasciola that is liver fluke so here we end phylum platyhelminthes 
Now we will come to phylum Ascalminthes or roundworms. Ascalminthes or roundworms. They are circular in cross section. That means if we cut this like this and like this, we will get some kind of a cylindrical body. We will get some kind of a cylindrical body. And if we cut it more, we will again see this round cross sections. They are free living or aquatic. They can be terrestrial, parasitic. They have organ system level of organization. See, now we have come even further from tissue level of organization. Now we have come to organ system level of organization. They are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, pseudocelomate. What was pseudocelomate? Something like this. This mesoderm was scattered. They had no continuous mesoderm, but they had scattered mesoderms. So this was pseudocelomet. Now elementary canal is well developed. Muscular pharynx is there. Body vests are removed by excretory tubes called excretory pore. Body vests are removed by excretory tubes called excretory pore. Sexes here are separate. So in Ascalminthes, we can see that starting from Ascalminthes, that sexes are separate. Until last phylum, that is Platyhelminthes, we found that sexes are not separate. Females longer than males, fertilization internal, development direct, young ones resembles the adult. And in, there might be indirect development also. But in case of direct development, young ones will resemble the adult. Example is Ascaris, which we know as the round worm. Bucheriria, that is the filarial worm. And Cyclostoma or the hook worm. So these are the examples of round worms. Now we will come to phylum Annelida. See, it comes from annulus or these concentric rings. You can see Annelida. So hence it is named as Annelida. They are aquatic, marine or freshwater. They can be terrestrial also, free living or parasitic. So they can be aquatic. In aquatic, they can be both freshwater and marine. They can be terrestrial, free living or parasitic. Again, it has organ system level of organization. It has bilateral symmetry. See, with this we can show. This side and this side are equal. So, they have bilateral symmetry. This is hirudinaria. They have segmented metamers. That is body is metamerically segmented. The one which I have shown. These segments. Longitudinal and circular muscles are present. Both longitudinal means like this. And circular muscles are present which are used for locomotion. Parapodia or parallel appendages are present. These ones. These are the parallel appendages or parapodia for swimming. They are used for swimming. And they have a closed circular circulatory systems means they have a network of veins and arteries. The cells are not just uh, drenched in the blood or bathed in the blood. Okay, They have a network of veins and arteries to reach the 
cells with their uh, needed nutrition okay reproduction is sexual nephridia present which is used in osmoregulation and excretion which is used in osmoregulation and excretion neural system is present paired ganglia is there connected by lateral nerves to double ventral nerve cord there is a nerve cord which is in the ventral side and here there are in the head part there are two ganglia which is again connected let me show you like this imagine this is the body this is the ventral nerve cord at the head there are these two pairs of ganglia which is connected by lateral nerve and this lateral nerve is also connected to this dorsal nerve cord okay examples are neresis which is dioecious Artworm, liches, which are monoecious, which are monoecious. Okay. So now let us come to our next one, Arthropoda. That is the phylum of insects. Remember, this is the largest phylum of Animalia. This is the largest phylum of Animalia. Approx two third of all named species. So. there is no chutkara from insects it is the largest phylum and has two third of total discovered species animal species so insects se aap heat lagao kuch bhi karo chutkara nahi hai this again has organ system level of organization they are bilateral symmetrical see this i am showing in this scorpion okay i am showing in this scorpion this bilaterally symmetrical okay this color is not uh, visible maybe i can use this see in the scorpion this is bilaterally symmetrical body this and this half is almost equal they have chitinous exoskeleton we can see it very clearly here it has chitinous exoskeleton body consists of head thorax abdomen and joint appendages what are joint appendages we have seen their legs like this correct so these are the joints so they have joint appendages respiratory organs are what gills book lungs book gills trachea system sorry this has gone uh, this thing tracheal system tracheal system here the circulatory system is open in the last one we found that circulatory system is closed that is an annelida and here we find that circulatory system is open because it's made the cells are directly drenched or bathed in the blood they don't have a uh, proper uh, artery or vein network so this is uh, the open circulatory system sensory organs we know it as antenna they have eye eyes may be simple or compound statocysts or balancing organ they have statocysts or balancing organ excretory organ is known as malpighian tubule this is very important question because almost every time it gives this that excretory organ of arthropoda is malpighian tubule fertilization internal mostly oviparous that is produce young ones by eggs oviparous means produce young ones by eggs economically important are apes that is honey bee bombyx laxifer vectors are anopheles culex and aedes these are all mosquitoes 
and carrier of our um, dengue virus, malaria, and everything. Gregarious pests, locust, living fossil, limulus. So this is the uh, top to bottom everything of NCRT of phylum Arthropoda. So I'm trying to make like a, a very intensive notes of NCRT, like taking each and every line so that you don't miss any important point of NCRT. So students, if you like my effort, uh, then please you can like my video and subscribe the channel so that I get more motivated to make such videos and come in front of you. And let me know if you want any type of improvement or anything more, then also you can let me know and give me suggestions. Okay, Chalo. Now we are coming to phylum Mollusca. This is the second largest. After Arthropoda, this is the second largest. They again can be terrestrial, aquatic. Aquatic may marine or freshwater. They have organ system level of organization. Bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, silamet. Okay. Body is covered by calcareous cell. In the last one, we found chitinous cells. Okay. In arthropoda, chitinous cells. But in mollusca, calcareous cell. See this calcareous shell. Sorry. In arthropoda, it is chitinous. And in mollusca, it is calcareous. Soft and spongy layer of skin forms a mantle over the visceral hum. Space between the hum and the mantle is called mantle cavity. There is this hard mantle. Below this, there is a soft part. And the space between this is known as mantle cavity. Feather-like gills are present which has respiratory and excretory functions. Anterior head region has sensory tentacles. The anterior of the head region has sensory tentacles. Mouth contains a file-like rasping organ for feeding called radula. Mouth has a grasping organ which is known as Radula, they are usually dioecious, oviparous and indirect development. So these are few of the examples like pila, sepia, loligo, etc. Examples of phylum mollusca. Now let us come to echinodermata. While uh, teaching you radial symmetrical organism, echinodermata is a very important one because see in it the adults are radially symmetrical larvae are bilaterally symmetrical so this is something we need to remember very strongly okay that here the adults are radially symmetrical but larvae are bilaterally symmetrical they are triploblastic and silamet. Endoskeleton of calcareous ossicles and they have spiny bodies. They have spiny bodies. Okay. This is a characteristic feature. This is a very important characteristic feature. Here digestive system is complete. Means mouth on the lower or ventral side and anus on the upper or dorsal side. So when there is both a mouth and an anus, we tell that digestive system to be a complete digestive system. Okay. And it starts from this phylum that is phylum echinodermata. Phylum echinodermata. Presence of water vascular system, which helps in locomotion, capture and transport of food and respiration. 
excretory system is absent sexes are separate sexual reproduction happens fertilization external development indirect and free swimming larva okay so this is the overall concept of echinodermata now slowly slowly we are coming towards our favorite cord data but before that we have a very small phylum which is known as hemichordata actually it was earlier considered as subphylum under phylum chordata but now it is placed as a separate phylum under non chordates okay so this is a very typical example of hemichordata this consists of a small group of worm like marine animals these are worm like marine animals and these again have organ system level of organization we can understand because it was actually placed under chordata so initially so it must have organ system level of organization at least bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic cilamate cylindrical body having anterior proboscis a collar and a long trunk see this proboscis this is the collar and this is a long trunk that is why we call it worm like we call it worm like circulatory system is open type respiration takes place through gills excretory organ is proboscis excretory organ is proboscis sexes are separate fertilization external development indirect example are balenoglossus and saccoglossus okay examples are balenoglossus and sacoglossus so this is balenoglossus so now we are coming to after hemichordata we are coming to phylum chordata so this has a characteristic characteristic feature of presence of notochord so that is why we call it chordata no it has a characteristic feature of presence of notochord a dorsal hollow nerve cord and a paired pharyngeal gill slits okay so it has a nerve cord notochord gill slits and this post anal part they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic cilamate organ system level of organizations these are the things we will like right blindly since this is the most advanced form it has bilaterally symmetrical body it has it is triploblastic obviously it is cilamate that is it has true body cavity organ system level of organization to matlab hai hi hai so these are the few things that we are going to remember logically brain ke upar ye rakhne mein pressure mat do obviously it will be triploblastic cilamate and it will have organ system level of organization okay they possess a post anal tail closed circulatory system yes we do have closed circulatory system now we are going to briefly quickly discuss difference between chordates and non chordates here notochord present here notochord absent central nervous system is dorsal central nervous system is ventral solid or hollow single or double pharynx perforated by gill slits here gill slits are absent heart is ventral heart is dorsal post and uh, post anal tail is present post anal tail is absent okay so these are the few differences between chordates and non chordates now phylum chord data chord data sorry is again divided into three subphyla eurochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata so vertebrata is something in which we fall okay but other than that these there are two subphyla eurochordata and cephalochordata eurochordata is also known as tunicata now 
subphyla urochordata and cephalochordata the characteristics are given together they are exclusively marine notochord is present only in the larval tail in case of urochordata and it extends from head to the tail region and is persistent throughout their life in cephalochordata so this is one important point notochord is present only in the larval tail in urochordata in urochordata it is not present throughout the adult stage but it extends from head to tail region and persists throughout the life in cephalochordata example of urochordata acedia cephalochordata is branchiostoma so this one is acedia just an image of uh, urochordata okay now we will come to the members of subphylum vertebrata they possess notochord during the embryonic period they possess notochord throughout the embryonic period after that what happens this notochord is replaced by cartilaginous or bony vertebral columns yes do we have notochord no we have this bony vertebral column so our notochord is replaced by this bony vertebral column thus all vertebrates are chordates but all chordates are not vertebrates obviously all vertebrates is under chordata but it, is it mandatory that all the chordata will have bony this vertebral column no only the ones where this notochord is replaced by a bony or cartilaginous vertebral column is known as vertebrates okay vertebrates also have a ventral muscular heart with two three four chambers kidneys for excretion and osmoregulation they have paired appendages which may be fins or limbs see paired up paired appendages two hands we have two legs so these are paired appendages okay now subphylum vertebrata is divided as follows vertebrata in which divisions are agnatha like the organisms which are lacking jaws and nathostomata which has jaws okay jaws like us jaws okay so under agnatha there is cyclostomata under nathostomata there is super class pisces which bears fins that is they uh, the fishes belong to this class they have fins okay and tetrapoda the one which bear limbs so we fall under this tetrapoda do we have fins no we have limbs so we are under tetrapoda so under nathostomata which bear jaws there is again two divisions one which bear fins that is fish where we have two types chondrichthys and osteichthys that i am coming later and we also have tetrapoda which bear limbs under which there is amphibia reptilia apes and mammals so let us come one by one now cyclostomata all living members are ectoparasites on some fishes they are ectoparasites that is not they are not present inside the body they will be present outside the body of the fish okay they have elongated body with 6 to 15 pair of gills imagine cyclostomes have a sucking and circular mouth without jaws obviously it falls under uh, this thing agnatha that is without jaws so it won't have jaws it has a sucking circular mouth body is devoid of scales and paired fins cranium and vertebral column are cartilaginous circulation closed type they are marine but migrate for spawning to fresh water after spawning within a few days they die their larvae after metamorphosis that is conversion into adult return to the ocean so their adult life is spent in the ocean or that is marine water but for spawning they go for fresh water 
so now let us come to class chondrichthys okay this is under nathostomata and this is under uh, super class spices class chondrichthys these are marine animals with streamlined body and have cartilaginous endoskeleton mouth is located ventrally mouth is located ventrally notochord persistent throughout their life gill slits are separate and without operculum or gill cover the skin is tough containing minute placoid scales they have modified teeth which are backwardly directed they have powerful jaws animals are predaceous due to absence of air bladder they have to swim constantly so this is a very good question again for neat that they have absence of air bladder so they has to swim constantly to keep their balance okay heart is again two chambered one auricle one ventricle now very interesting point they have electric organs see they have electric organs and some also po uh, possess this poison sting known as trigon they are cold blooded that is poikilothermous that is they cannot maintain their body temperature okay they have to migrate along with the uh, change in the season or change in the water temperature because they are cold blooded animals lack the capacity to regulate their body temperature sexes are separate in males pelvic fins bear claspers in males pelvic fins bear claspers they have internal fertilization and many of them are viviparous so example is coleoderm that is dog fish saw fish great white shark and trigon that is stingray okay now let us come to the fish that we are aware of that is ostichthys okay that is ostichthys this include both marine and freshwater fishes with bony endoskeleton we know about the fish bones the body is streamlined mouth is mostly terminal they have four pairs of gills which have operculum they have they have four pairs of gills which are covered by operculum skin is covered with cycloid or tenoid scales air bladder is present which regulates buoyancy heart is two chambered one auricle one ventricle they are again cold blooded animals sexes are separate fertilization is external they are mostly oviparous they are mostly oviparous sorry 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 they are mostly oviparous and development is direct development is direct for example we know about katla and this is a sea horse now we will come to amphibia which is aquatic as well as terrestrial amphi that is dual and bias means life so they have aquatic as well as terrestrial life most of them has two pairs of limbs their body is divisible into head and trunk tail may be present in some like this but they don't have the skin is moist without scales they have eyelids tympanum represents the uh, the ear elementary canal urinary and reproductive tracts open into a common chamber called cloaca elementary canal urinary and reproductive tracts open into a common chamber called cloaca respiration is by gills lungs and through skin now this point we have to remember okay gills and lungs are there gills for water lungs for air but they can as well breathe through skin so this we have to remember 
the heart is three chambered two auricles and one ventricle two auricles and one ventricle they are again cold blooded sexes are separate fertilization external they are oviparous and development is indirect for example salamander and this is our rana that is frog now we will come to reptilia okay which means creeping or crawling mode of locomotion they do not have external ear openings like we found tympanum in case of uh, amphibia they don't have they are mostly terrestrial body is covered by dry and cornified skin epidermal scales or scutes it is known as epidermal scales or scutes they do not have external ear openings tympanum represents the ear limbs when present are two pairs heart is usually three chambered but four chambered in crocodile that is a partial it is kind of a three and a half chambered heart okay it is a kind of a partial uh, division so reptiles are poikilotherms they shed their scales as skin cast sexes are separate we know no that uh, reptiles can shed their skin fertilization is internal their oviparous development is direct so this is our uh, class reptilia we know that snakes can shed skin okay uh, here the image of snake is not given anyways these are just few representative uh, images of class reptilia now reptilia is done so here we can see that we have promoted ourselves one step in which point in case of heart till now from two chambered in amphibia we found three chambered now in reptilia we found that usually three chambered but four chambered in crocodile so now let's see what happens in the next class our next class is avis the beautiful birds here there is presence of feathers most of them can fly except few like ostrich they possess beak they have four limbs which are modified into wings they have hind limbs they generally have scales which are modified for walking swimming clasping the tree branches here the skin is dry we know like moist skin is present in the amphibia in reptilia also we found dry skin in avis also we are going to find dry skin without any gland except the oil gland at the base of the tail endoskeleton is fully ossified that is bony long bones are hollow with air cavity that is pneumatic bones why because to keep them afloat to help the birds to fly or keep them afloat their long bones are full of air cavities okay they are hollow the digestive tract of bird has additional chambers the crop and the gizzard heart here is completely four chambered so we have upgraded ourselves one more time that is heart is completely four chambered that is the oxygenated blood and oxygenated blood is completely separate they are warm blooded they are able to maintain a constant body temperature here the respiration is by lungs air sacs are connected to lungs to supplement respiration sexes separate we know male birds female birds male birds are more beautiful than female birds this we are go going to learn in the further chapters anyways let me not deviate fertilization is internal they are oviparous development is direct now what examples to give about birds every every bird you see around you but fir bhi there are few represented this is ostrich this is vulture this is our parrot and peacock so now we will be coming to the end of our chapter that is class mammalia 
they are found in variety of habitats polar rice desert human everywhere humans are present everywhere and wherever we will go we will create pollution we can stay everywhere we can adapt to every damn climate and we will pollute it and make it like ourselves so uh, mammalia has a habitat uh, which is a varied habitat some of them are adapted to fly or live in water the most unique mammalian characteristic is presence of milk producing glands mammary glands with which we can feed our young ones okay so this is the most beautiful part of mammalia that is they have milk producing mammary glands through which they can feed their young ones and nourish them they have two pairs of limbs adapted for walking running climbing swimming or flying the skin of mammals is unique in possessing hair another thing what we have instead of scales we have hairs in our skin external ears or pin is present like sorry my ear is covered with my earphone but yeah we have ears different types of teeth are present in the jaw heart is four chambered completely four chambered they are homeothermal that is warm blooded respiration by lungs sexes are separate fertilization is internal and they are viviparous mostly they are viviparous that is they directly give birth through a child and not through egg so these are few examples of mammalia other than us human beings so this is the complete chapter of animal kingdom now we are going to start with the structural organization of animals and then we will go to animal cells so for now this chapter is done uh, thank you once again for giving me your love and support and if you like my videos like my lectures then do like share subscribe my channel thank you Thank you.